Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today is a special video since last time you saw the RMK it was working pretty good but as you can see from these videos uh, it's in pretty bad shape. Uh, it took a beating and during the testing I didn't mind to rebuild it completely each time and then it sat on the shelves for a few months and uh, I even took it on a spin on the water in some light mud. Turns out it can water skip. I don't have a video of it though. But yeah, so I decided to uh, take a minute to show you how I can rebuild it using the new parts and as well I'm going to show you the new track I designed during the summer. And then I'm also going to show you a few of the new parts like the complete uh, suspension is all made by me. So you can just take this whole block out and every part is now available on my website. Also the frame is in good shape, the only reason I didn't rebuild it is because I didn't have time back then, but most of the parts are still working pretty good. I designed a set of A-arms that was a bit tougher than the previous version, so they should last a bit longer. Also while I'm at it, I bought some special blue filament which is supposed to be tougher than the original one I had, so the complete front end is going to be pretty much bulletproof at this point. Back when the spindles weren't designed, I had to reuse the previous one and try to make them fit properly without breaking them, which was a pain. I think I broke two of them trying to make them fit. But now that I have these, I don't even need the old ones anymore and I can print them any colors I want. So that's why I went with blue. I think they'll complement the look pretty good. Every skis that I sent to customer had to be printed flat for maximum durability and ease of print. But as you can see you just need a bit of heat, usually I'm using a candle but I couldn't find any so I'm using my blowtorch to soften the plastic and give the proper shape. For the front hook I usually give about a hand height of, uh, to the bend and they seem to be pretty good and then half a hand for the back portion of it. And the best case scenario it should fit right in just like this. I didn't have any real reasons to change this kit, but I figured since I printed the new parts I might as well use the latest versions. As you can see they're a bit different, not too much, but just a few uh, improvements in stiffness and durability. I also figured I would go blue because I like the look of them. I would recommend using grease for every metal part that isn't like stainless or, or brass or anything. I would suggest using the winter grease which is like a low temperature and it doesn't become solid as much when it's getting to very cold climates which is you know a snowmobile so I would suggest this. I believe the ball joints are not rust proof so I would suggest getting some there and some of the bearings as well.
Here's a look of the new track. As you can see every lug is tilted slightly backward. It has to do because you don't want to just chop snow out, you also want a bit of compaction. It helps get you forward. I also made a little improvement over preventing the rods from going out. So you just heat up these little thingies and when they melt and start to move, you just compress them with a screwdriver or a plier. It locks the metal rod inside. It's quite convenient, but I haven't broken one yet, so I don't know how, it, how hard it's going to be to take it off. But in theory, you should just heat them back up and bend them back up. Here's a close-up of both track. As you can see, there is a slight difference in them. Don't look at how bad the first one looks. It was printed on my first printer, and since then, I had two new printers, so they should look a bit better now. Not that it matters, but... When I started riding the snowmobile, I used a Sidewinder SCT combo, but the problem with it is that it doesn't have a sensor, so I cannot go very slow with it. So I went with the Mamba X, which is pretty awesome, but plot twist, it blew up. So I had to go back to uh, the Sidewinder. These parts are pretty dirty, so I think it's about time for a good wash. Normally I would repaint the tunnel completely, but since it's a very small area and it's under the light, I don't really mind using a sharpie to hide the spots. I'm using M2 screws for all the tunnel parts. Since they are quite small and the head doesn't protrude too much, it doesn't interfere with the logs and doesn't break them. I found this old uh, rubber material that was inside of a tire. It's gonna be perfect for making a new snow flag that doesn't deflect or breaks. Plus it's really easy to work with. It cuts with scissors and is a pretty good fit.
Now here comes the messy part. There's so many wires. You have one for the battery, you have one for the servo, one ESC and one for the fans, but they also have for the lights. So you have a big nest of wire in there, but eventually I pull it through. I added these uh, vents because the EC was getting pretty toasty in there so I figured I would add some ventilation. I put a small metal mesh over top of it and painted it so it looks pretty good. And now a final white and it should look pretty good. I'm telling you, there are still RC snowmobiles for sale on used market. There's just so many people that had them. It's impossible you don't find any. You just gotta look for the worst that nobody is looking for. Some people might sell them as RC snowmobiles, some other people might just say Polaris Rush for sale and you had to look through uh, $50 and less. With that being said, I'm giving 30% off until Thanksgiving to everything on the store. That includes the computer STLs file as well as the parts themselves. So I would highly suggest you get them right now. I'm not saying why, but you might find it difficult to get some new parts after that. So take your shot, go get them. And on that note, take care and I'll see you next time. Bye.